I'm in. I can make you the host as soon as you come in. Just open the meeting. Just go to the meeting like you were attending the meeting. Can I, oh, I missed him. Sorry, Walter was calling. Yeah, you should be able to just log in. Arlene's here. You could just go to the calendar and click on the link there. Oh, here you are. I had to open it for you. Not yet. I have to wait till you're all the way in and everything shows up. It says you're still connecting to audio. So do you have video or what do you? Sure. Okay. Okay, so you're on your iPhone now. I see you. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so what's the, what's okay. the story? All right, so I'm gonna make you the host. Boy, my, my photo never even showed up, did it? That's weird. And am I gonna be on the host on the iPhone or on the, uh, I think there's, it's called Board of Health where I'm, I think the iPhone is where I can make you the host. The other connection, I could do either one. I don't know if the, how does it matter to you? Um, you know what, go ahead and do it iPhone and I'll just turn the other thing off because it's really confusing. I've never, I, I don't, this is why I don't host the meeting because I don't have audio and video on my How about my I just desktop. make Arlene the host? No, Arlene's out of town. No, she's right here. Oh. She's right here, though. Uh, I yeah, am here, but but I am on the road, and if and uh, okay, yeah, that should be yeah. Okay, yeah. here we go. I'm making Catherine the host, and then I will say good night. Thank you, Becky. Sure. Have a okay. good evening. Oh, somehow it made Wim the host. Oh, what a surprise! Oh, lucky everybody Wim. moved and Wim ended up being the host. That's what right. lucky I, Wim. Thank you, Wim. <laughs> that's fine with me as long as I know what I have to do as a host. Um, you just have to end the meeting when it's over. Oh, just just close it. Yeah. And if you get Zoom bombed, you might want to close early and reopen. But right. don't okay. worry. It should well, <laughs> I'm gonna don't. make her. I'm Catherine, I'm gonna make you co-host just in case something happens to Wim. Okay. But I can't do it. Wim has to do it now. I have no power. Okay. Wim, can can you make Catherine the co-host? Um, I have no idea. How. Okay, so you just click on um participants. Yeah. In the middle of the bottom, click on participants, and then you find Catherine, Catherine's iPhone. Yeah. And then you click on the little video screen to the far right. It says more and you push it, push it again. And then you make her the co-host. Click on her picture first. 
No, you you click on the far right. There's a little video camera icon. Uh, I'm looking for it right next to to Kat, Kat's picture. No, right next to Kat's name. On in the, the in the list of participants. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Okay. Um, it seems covered by more. So make host. Right, press make, on more. Make co-host. Yay! You did it. Excellent. There you are. Okay, now you got triple backup. Great. Thank you, guys. Have a good meeting. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Becky. Bye bye. Bye. What happened yeah. just now was. I went to, Garrett can't come, and so I went to open the meeting, but it, Zoom didn't recognize my, my device. So it asked me to get a verification code by going to the, the email address that is the login. But one, I don't have access to that email. And two, it doesn't even really exist. It's just a dummy name. And so how'd you so do it? How did I you called, do it? I called Becky and Becky uh, got in using her device and then handed it off. Oh, good. Good thinking. Here so we are. Our, so Arlene is, is here in spirit. She's on mute because she's on the road and Garrett I, isn't here are, at all. We are in, driving in the middle of Nebraska. So I'm <laughs> yeah. not driving. I'm not driving. In Nebraska, I'm wow. <laughs> That I'm glad like to hear fun. that. Yeah, right. 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 <laughs> don't don't, I'll don't stay drive so you're not, And I will stay muted so you are not subject to this road noise. But I'll unmute if I am needed, okay? Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, my gosh. Um, can we quickly review the minutes of the previous meeting and or at least uh, accept them? They, they look fine to me. So they I, look fine, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And we'll assume that Arlene likes them and she doesn't have to unmute herself and tell us. So they're, they're fine. Thank you. Give me a sec. And I guess I didn't copy that. Um, I was going to be all ready, you know, with this. With this meeting and then everything got screwed up so i'm a little behind the thing here um okay you may have received and seen um a report from greg steve about the status of his um his uh, demolition project yeah. um he hasn't made a lot of progress, but it doesn't seem to me f that it's for lack of trying. He's got a demolition okay from the electric company. Um, he's, uh, they have apparently finished the hazard report. They keep coming back and thinking of more things to test for, um, but they apparently have finished it. So, well, no, apparently they haven't. Uh, well, he's still awaiting results from certain sample areas. Um, so that's all that's happened there. Uh, I, I propose that we, um, that we delay action on this for another month. And this is his third 30 day grace period, right? Um, possibly. Second, I think, I think it's I, the second. I think it's the second. The first one kind of got extended a little bit. Right. I think it was. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so he should have, he needs, well, he needs another one anyway, no matter what. And would you just remind us, Kat, do you know off the top of your head what we asked him just to, do we ask him to report on certain things? <clears throat> we just asked him to give us a progress report on what okay. he had. We had okay. at one time asked for documentation of his, his dealings with uh, the lawyer and the insurance company and stuff, but he told me he doesn't have it because he's more of an in-person face-to-face guy and he doesn't have the, doesn't have any written documentation. So, okay. so there it is. But you know, I mean, he's, 
he's working along and he's just as frustrated as everybody else about it. And so I guess, I, I don't know if we can assume anything about this, but if he gets his hazards report uh, and he gives that to the insurance company, presumably then he can demolish the building. I, I guess I'd, it would be nice to know what the next steps are, I guess is all I'm suggesting. It'd be nice to know what his next steps are. Maybe we could ask him for that. Like, okay. What is right. the process you're, you know, that you see? Okay. What are the steps you have to take before you can demolish the building? <clears throat> right. And then we would know. And then we can gauge better, you know, our extension. It, sound, it sounded like he has a demolition company lined up. Yeah, he, he does. He has a contract with a demolition company. And last I knew, he was arguing with the insurance company about how much they would pay for it. Um, but that's that's the lawyer stuff that we don't know about. Right. Um, and so I think that the two major obstacles, material obstacles, not financial obstacles, um, to actually getting the building taken down are the sign off from the electric company right. um, and the um, and the hazard the hazard report I asked him I, I saw him the other day um, so I stopped to talk and I asked him what would happen if they found hazardous substances and he said he didn't know so I would assume that in some way those hazardous substances would have to be would have to be removed before they could just knock mm. the building down but he uh he doesn't know and neither do i so he may not have that good a grasp on the process either but i will ask okay. him to to include that in the next report okay that's great thank you that reminds me um mm -hmm. Okay, our next, our, our first meeting in July would be the 6th. So that's a, that's a thing we can do. Okay. All righty. Um, so might I hear a motion to delay action on the condemnation? So moved. And is there a second? Second. And all in favor, or let's let's do it by at, at the town meeting. They call it a consent agenda, which is what we do basically all the time. Which is we just ask if there are any objections. So, are there any objections to passing this motion? Hearing none, I'll assume that that is that is what we're we're doing now. Um, I got an email from Miriam, um, you know, whatever the it font. is. Mir the yeah, font. yeah. Um, mm. la a, a week or so, actually, it was before our last meeting, but I, I neglected to get it on the agenda. Um, they are they are going out and visiting sites and finding out that we've already issued a septic system permit and they haven't even reviewed the site yet and they're finding wetlands on them. So something is not going well with our, um, our back and forth with them. So I asked her what, how, what she would like to see. And she said she wasn't sure because because if they have to go out and look at every single site that comes before the Board of Health, for example, she's afraid everybody will resign because it'll just be too much work. Um, there is one thing that I have thought about. Well, for, for example, let me tell you this. You know, you know that little house down on Lakeview that Joey Salvador bought and demolished right. and left up the chimney? Yes. Well, well, mm -hmm. Um, the CONCOM went out and visited it. It wasn't when Mir Miriam was on it, but they went out and visited it in the snow, apparently, and they, and they basically gave their approval. And then when the snow melted, they discovered it's, the septic system was like five feet off a wetland. So uh, at first I thought that was our fault and she said, no, it was theirs. Um, 
something that we used to do that I haven't been doing and that maybe would help with this is there are some lists of properties listed by lot and there are two different um, two different folders that we have giving showing wetlands sites with that are all delineated. And, you know, since we've been meeting not in town hall, I just haven't been thinking about that, but I can try to, um, to check those, those lists and see if there are any areas of concern that, that are known before we, before we give approval. And then we can flag them for CONCOM and they can have their input before we do. And the That's, others with no known wetland do not have to go before the CONCOM, CONCOM then, right? Or are they right. Still right. They 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 don't if there isn't any any um so we can pre-qualify a percentage of them. Yeah, yeah, effectively, yeah. Or what's what we can we can sort of do the opposite. We can, if a, if a septic system design comes in to us and it doesn't show any, even if it doesn't show any wetlands, we can check one of these lists and see if there's something that they have missed. And then we can send it, send it and them to CONCOM to have it evaluated for wetlands. Right. That, that sounds good, Kat. The only thing I'm wondering is, is that the simplest way? Is there anything? that we know of, like does the COG have anything online that determines wetlands? Is there anything more updated that would make it easier to check that than going and looking through, you know, this paperwork, it sounds like, that we have that determine our wetlands? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Just, just a thought, that. if there's an yeah. easier way to do it. I'm, I'm just waiting. It seems to me there might be something that the COG has that Right. That you might be able to look up online. Right, or at least a, a searchable digital thing. Yeah, yeah, without having to go search, you know, paper now. Right, right. Um, yeah, we had two, we had two things. And one of them came from, it came from some legislation that had somebody's name on it, but then there was another list too, and they had, maps and it seems to me one of those maps was available online mm. okay who do you think who do you think i should ask at FERCOG? or or oh boy. Could, you could you possibly find yeah I'll, I'll, I'll call mark and if he you know he's the communications guy now he should know who who in FERCOG. okay, okay. Yeah, if, if you could track that down i okay. will I will go when I'm in town hall next, which will probably be in the next day or two, I will find those things and um, sort of just determine what they are so we know what we're talking about. Okay, that, that would be you, helpful so I can ask him know. something intelligent. Okay. <laughs> like, do you have this list of like wetlands things with some, <laughs> some legislation right. that's got some guy's name on it? I think it's an Irish name, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'd make a really good impression that way, huh? Definitely. Okay. okay, so so I'll put you down for checking on that um, and me for supplying some information on what to check for. Okay. All right. Okay, so it seems to me that we have a, a guest Des, a guest. <laughs> Our guest is a desk. Oh gosh, who is Tom Seifert? And uh, Tom, if you would like to unmute yourself and oh, you're unmuted now and tell us what you have in mind. Hi, thanks so much. Um, how y'all doing? Um, I wanted to visit your meeting, please, to ask about whether you received an email from me. Um, requesting an explanation of the uh, cooking um, requirements or food serving requirements at the SAC, please. Yes, in fact, I did receive that, that email and I haven't answered it yet because I didn't have the answer. 
Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, as it happened, just this day, I met with uh, Charlie Konecki and also some people from the club to talk about just that. And um, uh, basically, when it comes to to dinners that to meals that are hosted by the club um by volunteers for whatever non-profit purposes they are doing them most of the most of the requirements do not apply they are exempt for example well and the the specific thing that came up on friday at the last minute i point out um, uh, it would have been perfectly acceptable for that meal to be served, even though it was prepared in a non-conspected kitchen, if there had been signage um, making it clear that uh, not all of the food had been prepared on site and in a licensed kitchen. Uh, that si signage is now being developed for use in the future. Um, as far as, by the way, to go back to a few weeks before, as far as the wild game question goes, um, again, because of the, um, um, the nature of the club, as long as the, um, as long as the meat was butchered at an appropriate, you know, I guess it's a USDA licensed slaughterhouse, um, that can be served. Is that, is that everything? Because I had a few more questions I didn't want to interrupt you. Go, go ahead, there's, uh, there's probably more in my mind, but I can't get it okay, at thanks. the front right now. Um, I wanted to ask about what the nature of the club means and nonprofit. Um, does that mean that all dinners that are served there by volunteers or that are not prepared in the inspected kitchen have to, if they uh, get payment, put all that payment towards a nonprofit cause? Yes, except for, except for reimbursing um, for the, um, uh, the ingredients. Who reimburses whom? From the, from the proceeds, the people who bought food for preparation are reimbursed. The club reimburses people, because I don't remember that historically. Does the club have to reimburse people for their food? I don't know the answer. It? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. But they, um, but they, so, but they legally can. That's the point. Okay. So regarding the monetary proceeds, um, if they do not go to a nonprofit, then all the food must be prepared there and in an inspected kitchen. Is that correct? Nobody actually put it in those terms. That's why I'm hesitating to answer that. But I would, I would think so. Yeah, unless okay. of course, unless of course, I mean, some of the some of the things that are served there are actually bought, prepared, and just heated up there. Is that right. allowed? Oh yeah, absolutely. To reheat prepared food. Yeah, yeah. To buy things like like the meatballs are are um, are frozen, bought frozen, and they're and they're heated there. Arlene, do you want to say something? Yeah. Can we clarify? Is uh, that the um, AC itself qualifies as a nonprofit? In other words, when they do, for instance, a membership dinner, uh, you know, the Friday night dinners that have now for a few years, all gone to support the operations of the AC. The AC itself is a nonprofit, am I right? Yes, you are right. They have, they have Massachusetts nonprofit status. Um, and I think they may be working on 501c3, which would be federal tax exempt status, but I don't know that they are there yet. However, um, since since they are considered nonprofit in Massachusetts, the nonprofit not-for-profit rules apply to them. Go ahead, Tom. 
Um, Not-for-profit status is only a federal designation and the state accepts the federal determination. That's not what we've been told. I can look into it. Who told you that, please? Um, it came a sort of- 501c3 and myself as an occupation. So I've never heard of um, the state being able to determine not-for-profit status. I thought only well, the IRS the, could. The state has something called, I believe, Form 180. And that was enough to satisfy the environmental police whom you apparently notified of your complaint. Yeah, um, I don't think they have jurisdiction to check the IRS. So I wanted to know who told you to confirm that the club has nonprofit status, please. I was told it by someone at the club, I don't recall. And they said that they got it from this, from someone at DP, DEP. I don't have full- Can you uh, get a record of their not? Uh, for profit status, please. They ought to have that in writing. I don't, uh, yeah, I think I could probably do that, but I don't know that I, it's my job to provide documentation for you. But you just told me that you are accepting their word that they are not for profit and it's not too much to ask them to uh, supply that in writing. I just had to today for a tax exempt purchase for my 501c3 that I work for in Athol. They should have a letter from the IRS if it's 501c anything, C4, C6, C3. Uh, well, we could certainly ask for that. Thank you. Okay, so you will ask them for a written copy of their not-for-profit status from the IRS or other federal authority, please. I'll ask them for whatever they have. Thank you. Um, Something else? Yeah, if you want, I'll read them out loud and please just say yes or no, or we can do it maybe at a different meeting. Do they have a Victor Allers license currently? I believe that they do. Do you know when it expires? I have no idea. Do you know if they have Serve Safe certified cooks and how many? I know, I, I know they do and I don't know how many. Really, if you have if you have specific questions for the club, I think you should be asking the club. I don't care to be the go the go between here. But these are board of health questions, ma'am. When was the last kitchen inspection? It was earlier this year, but I don't know the date of it offhand. Was the bar inspected? I assume so. Do you know if the bar was inspected? I don't know. Can they accept donations? I think that depends on their not-for-profit status. Then it's in yeah. the um, Are any of you members of the SAC? Yeah. Who of you please are members of the SAC? I am. Although I don't, I may not have paid my dues this year, but I, but I, I am nominally a member. I have been a member in the past. I haven't paid for the last couple of years. I am not a member. Likewise, I have been in the past, but have not renewed a membership. We have been really not helpful, have we? No, what, no you've been extremely helpful. Extremely. Um, I want to make sure there are no conflicts I mean of the, interest. I mean to the club. I'm sorry? Pardon? I mean, I meant to the club. How do you mean? That we haven't paid any dues. Hmm. Well, I don't know. It depends on a person's age and other, um, they can yes, give other explanations aware, as well for whether they pay dues or not. Um, okay, um, if I have questions or complaints in the future, will I get a written response? And would you also please write down everything that you responded to me tonight in a written response to my email? Um, what I will do is I will put it in the minutes and you may access the minutes through the, through, the, through the board of, you know, the usual channels. Thanks. On March 17th. And now, yeah. now I have a, 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 some things to ask of you. One, if you have a communication for the board of health, the best and fastest way is to use the board of health email. I check that several times a day. Oh, awesome. The, the, um, the phone gets checked less often. You should also know that the Board of Health has a policy that does not allow Board of Health members to make or receive um, uh, Board of Health calls 
from their home phones and ideally not from their home emails if we can manage that. So please do not call any Board of Health members. Absolutely. I have another question, please, but Arlene has her hand raised. Go ahead, Arlene. Um, I will say that my uh, COVID case investigations and contact tracing work by definition needs to happen from my phone, either my landline or my cell phone, and has been, uh, um, I've been operating that way since the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, I think, I think we can, home, pardon me? I had, I had no uh, option for going to town hall and using town telephone to get that work done. Right, I think we can reasonably make an exception for that, that particular use because you have to do it. Agreed. Okay, and Tom, you had another question, I believe. Thank you. Um, on March 17th of 2021, the Board of Health had a meeting that I attended uh, the minutes indicate I attended, but they don't indicate anything that I said. I wanted to have an explanation for why nothing I said were, was included in those minutes, please. And I understand that that may be something you're not able to answer right now, given that it was a while ago. <laughs> I probably can't answer anything about a meeting that happened 14 months ago. Um, if you had had concerns yes, about it maybe 13 it? months ago, I might have been able to respond. Yes. Um, well, I believe the questions about what I said at that meeting may persist. And so I wanted to let you know now that I do believe I will be returning to that topic with you uh, because the Shrewsbury Athletic Club has said that I uh, spoke during that meeting in a substantive way. But again, there was no inclusion of what I said in the minutes. Um, Kat, I'm, yes. I'm just thinking that it might have been at that point that we were recording our meetings and we were, um, there were. Fortunately, I requested a recording and it's the only recording that you don't have available. It's the one oh, I you've looked at all the, You've about. looked at all the recordings? You know, yeah. you know what happened, Noreen? Um, that was, was when we were using, we, that's when we were using um, Al's. Um, oh, right. Yes. Zoom. And so fairly early on, we were asked for that recording, but not, I mean, I'm not sure how long they keep them, but right. they didn't keep it. They hadn't kept it any longer because I asked Al if he could retrieve it in some way and he looked into it and it just wasn't available. It's gone. That, that's fine. I just thought it might have been another source for Tom to find it, yeah. get the information he needs. Yeah. Who is no. Al, please? Al Werner was a board member at the time. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, I also wanted to file a complaint about an event on May 7th of 2021. I'm sorry, it's too late to be filing complaints now. A year later, it, that's, you know, there's a, we can, things expire. Well, I'll explain it for, it's being recorded in the minutes anyway. Um, the Board of Health had told the Shoots Bay Athletic Club that no alcohol would be allowed at an event on May 7th of 2021. A board member did bring alcohol and drink it and serve it at the event. I did actually complain about it right the next day, perhaps that evening. I took my email to the Shoots Bay Athletic Club and I have not received an answer. So my complaint is that I still have not received an answer about a Board of Health violation at the club that I did make a record uh, of a complaint of. I could forward you that email and I would like to know the resolution. Uh, it was a COVID regulation that no alcohol would be served or had at that event. What was this event? It was the Rosie Porter and Neon Moons uh, music. I don't know, it wasn't a concert. You know, the, a band played, it was at the- I see, I, I get it, yeah. It's in your minutes as well, I believe, from that time. Hmm. I'll so I'll I'm complaining that, that there is a on. violation. I'm also complaining that no um, response has been given to me after I complained to the club. 
Now, and you complain, and you and you reported this to the Board of Health. You say I reported it to the club. Oh, I see. I see. But I never received any response. About so, so Tom, I'm not sure what the implication is. If you complain to the club, what you see is the role of the Board of Health. Can you just help me there? I would like the Board of Health to ask the club to give me a response to a Board of Health violation that I complained to the club about. I was a board member at the time and I complained to my fellow board members and the president of the club about the violation. And I was told I would receive a response and I still have not received a response and it's been over a year. I can forward you the email with the names and the uh, date involved and their promise that they would uh, investigate it and I haven't received any news of their investigation. I believe you have the authority to ask them. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Sure. Um, I am rather sure that you have that authority because I believe it's number eight or nine in their memorandum of agreement with the town that complaints that they receive will be um, handled in a timely manner. And I believe a clear manner. And as the select board has jurisdiction, so to say, over that memorandum of agreement and over the Board of Health. And since this was a Board of Health complaint, that is how I do see that you are a key piece in this. Thank you very much. Let's see now, here we go. Yeah, May 7th, 2021. Oh, May, I'm in the wrong thing here. Mm -hmm. um, and on May 8th, I wrote them an email. Okay, so it sounds like we, Tom, what you're saying is we never, as far as you know, we never saw the complaint. The complaint from you went directly to the club. Is, is that correct? That's all is that what I you're know. Saying? That's yeah. all I know, yeah. I think that's all we know too. That's why I'm just trying to clarify. Okay. I don't know, yeah. Right, and I'm trying. I'm trying to find the um, the minutes at which this was said because it's not something that I remember at all. Yeah. Oh well, if you go um, to their Facebook page and their advertising of it, and if you ask the SAC themselves, and being a board member myself, it might even be in our SAC minutes. It was very clear from you that there would be no alcohol at that event. You made no. Um, you made it absolutely clear that that was the stipulation. I can find all the evidence for you and send you what I have. Um, just let's see. Mm -hmm. This probably would have been in the April 21 or April 29 board minutes. Um, and if it's not there, we can find it on the Zoom because I do have that Zoom video. It may be on April 21. Let me just give one more try here. Yeah, it's the April 21 minutes. It's labeled at 7.15 and it does not include the stipulation I talked about no alcohol for the May 7th event. But again, if we watch the video, we will see that. And it is in my notes, and I believe it's also in the notes of the SAC director's meeting minutes, but I don't have those on hand right now. Okay, uh, let me get. Operating was a reviewed and approved an operating plan, and that operating plan included no alcohol on that night. So it's from 21. Okay. 
so I am puzzling as uh, as Noreen was over the Board of Health's role here. What you say is you want a response from the club. Um, and what sort of response are you imagining you would get? I mean, what, what, I don't what's, know. what are you trying to get here? Catherine, I'm filing a complaint with the Board of Health. I think Becky Torres knows the protocol at that point. My complaint is that the Board of Health has not been involved in a Board of Health violation that I reported in good faith to the SAC over a year ago. And I want you to exercise your jurisdiction over this matter to get an answer as to why that happened, why the violation a year later is okay, but wouldn't have been okay earlier if I understood you correctly, et cetera, et cetera. I don't agree with you that a year later makes a violation not a problem. COVID is still existing, and this was a COVID violation. I don't know how to repeat it anymore, but it's not for me to tell you how to do the protocol for a complaint. I'm here to file. Well, you seem to think, but now, what I will do is. It's not for I me will... to do more than file the complaint. If you think my complaint is unsubstantiated or that you don't have the jurisdiction over it, please tell me that in writing. But I do believe you have the jurisdiction, and I can, again, send you the names and the incident details about that incident on May 7th, should it help. Well, yes, send it, obviously. And I'll also send you a copy, if you don't have it, of the Zoom meeting, and we can all do a transcript if necessary of the conversation. But What I would like to have, actually, rather than the transcript of the Zoom meeting... I wasn't aware of any um, what I would like limit to have, or deadline I was saying, on complaints. Excuse me, I haven't, I'm speaking. What I would like to have is the operating plan. Yeah, well, that's in the video. Is it a written document? That's the operating plan that you quoted in your minutes. That's for you to answer. Is there anything else we can do for you tonight, Tom? Is that Arlene? No, I want to know, go back. I, I'm sorry, my video is... Um, I am filing a complaint. That's all I'm doing. What I you, hear you. Your and, complaint Your complaint has been noted. And I will send you an email tomorrow, and I will include the email that I sent to the SAC on May 8th with the names of the people involved and the details of the incident. Very good. Is there anything that. else? No, but I, I want complaints to be welcomed. We pay a lot of taxes, and we all are concerned about public health here. And I don't want my complaint not to be unwelcomed. And I don't feel very welcomed, honestly, right now. Well, it, your complaint might have been more welcome if it had been timely to the Board of Health. Ma'am, I am under a lot of duress for harassment and discrimination and other issues, and I am not aware of a year deadline for any complaints. It's I would not like my that. complaint welcomed. I am sorry that it means work. I don't like That's having to be here saying this, but I am not feeling welcomed right now. And I wish complaints would simply be welcomed. Tom, your complaint would have been very welcome if it had come at a time when we might have done something about it. I'm asking you now it's to do moot. something about it. What do you mean? Something, I mean something corrective. Why that can't we, we could be corrective have now? That we could have intervened because the rules have changed, haven't they? What do you mean the rules have changed? You can intervene now. I don't understand what you're saying. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is if on, for example, May 8th, you had gotten in touch with the Board of Health and you had said alcohol- I am telling served. you, I will give you good evidence as to why I was not in a mental state to share that with you. And I beg you to tell me where there is a deadline for this. There is no deadline. Tom. Thank you. I am filing a complaint about a matter. I do not Thank deserve you. to be told I should have filed it earlier when I was not in a position to file it earlier. Thank you for your complaint, Tom. We will give it all the consideration that is possible. I do hope so. Okay. Is there anything else we can do no, for you? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for coming in and good night. Good night.
Is there anything else that needs to come before us at this meeting? Not that I'm aware of. Not from me. And I guess let, let us know if there's any way we can uh, help you um, with anything, Kat. Okay, I will certainly do that. If you can, if you can um, uh, follow up on finding the wetlands delineations we'll do. from FERCOG, yep. that would be really helpful. I, I will definitely do that. Um, you're going to give me a, a few things so I can give Mark a few more details as to what yes. we're looking for. Yes, yes, I will, and I will, I will do certainly that. do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there isn't anything else for us to talk about, um, let me just have a second. I was thinking there was something else that I didn't get on the list. I'll just, I'll just bring up, did anyone get the invitation from FERCOG to participate in the after action review? Yes, I did, okay. and I actually, I actually um, registered for it for the 16th, the one that's on the 16th. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm going to, too. And I think I did hear from Arlene. I guess the one I was worried about was Garrett, was Garrett didn't seem to have it in his mailbox. So did you get one, oh. Wim? Did you get one, Wim? I don't recall ever seeing this. Okay. So maybe you and oh, Garrett should be on their list. Hmm. Okay. Maureen, it I came. Think I did re I think you I did, did reply. reply you did. Say that I'm unlikely to have internet access at that time. Yeah, no, you uh, totally did. I was more concerned. Um, you know, I wasn't sure that Garrett had gotten one, for example. And Wim, it doesn't sound like you maybe did. I think we got another one from Mark maloney a day or two ago when so you might want to search for that or search in your trust well i'm just curious to make sure you're getting the information that's all well i'm gonna i'm going to forward it right now okay to, good. to wim and garrett to make sure that they have it okay great good thank you cat okay so so it's there and the rest of us are are covered right yep and while i'm talking to um mark i'll remind him to make sure that he has wim and garrett's yeah. uh email right and, and noreen i will i did say i think to you that i was going to take a closer look at the questions that mark had put out uh that sort of um you know guiding yes questions. yep Hold yep up. and yep, I I'm, will, I'm good I'll do my best to uh, compose some responses to those where I'm able to. And you're going to do it on the 16th, is that right? Yeah, it sounds like Kat and I are doing it on the 16th, but we're not the only ones. Other towns are involved in those as well. Right. So, by, yeah. by what date would you like to have any thoughts of mine on those guiding questions he put out? Oh, I think, um, I don't know. If you give me a day in advance, I probably won't really prepare and look at it until until then anyway. So it's more, you know, sort of in my mind sure. when I go to that meeting, so. Okay, I'll try to get it to you within the first 10 days of June. Is that okay? Perfect, thank you. Okay. So Noreen, is there more than just these two questions in the introduction? Is your town as a whole ready for the next large scale emergency? And how can FERCOG be better ready to help? Is that, are those the only questions or are there more questions that I'm, oh, oh, I just see there's guiding questions for the meeting. I hadn't even seen those before. To be perfectly honest, I haven't looked at them in any detail either, Kat, so. Uh-huh, okay, yeah, I've got them now, so I'll, uh, yeah, I'll me study too. them. Okay. And as I said, I'd be more likely to study them, you know, like the day before or the day of the meeting. Yeah, so they're, yeah. you know. Yeah, you want them fresh in your mind. Exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other um, any other thoughts or things to think about or whatever? Maybe a party. Well, that's a good thought. I thought it was. Yeah. I'm, I yeah. mean, we had one last year when um, Wim came on and Al left. So maybe it's time for us to do something again in July or August or whenever. I'm just going to throw it out there. You're welcome to come to our deck again if you like. 
Cool. Um, Arlene, when, when are you guys going to be, when are you and uh, Cliff going to be in town again? I know it's not the same, the same well, time. Um, right. I anticipate being back roughly July 25th. Okay. Take, and Cliff not until August 29th at wow. which and promptly go to the Cape and um, through Labor Day and then uh, at least through Labor Day and then he and Susan depart for Denver. He's driving her, helping her drive to Denver and he will be gone from about, I don't know, the middle two weeks of September. Is Susan um, moving to Denver? She is. Cool. She has a real job. Great. Maybe we should plan a get together though in my in the new cabin. Oh, that would be oh, cool. Oh yeah. I've been keeping my eye on that a little bit. That's that would be cool. That was Patsy's? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That'd be fun. Yeah. It'll yeah, be but I don't think we can wait around for Cliff. He's not gonna be available ever, so we'll just have to work around him. This is true. Not that. Well, no, I, we have time to plan that. Right. Okay. So let's just uh, put it on our agenda for another time to to plan something. I think right. we need to have a right. you know yeah. an event to relax a little bit. Absolutely, but we really don't have to do that in a meeting. We don't. No. Um, okay. If there isn't anything else to talk about, let us uh, let us adjourn. All in favor? Sounds good. Yes. Okay. So how did how do I so I'm the well, okay, first I'm I turn I turn the recording off. I stop the recording.